Royana says, if we put on a fake tattoo, not a permanent one, that can be removed in a week, on a part that does not need to be washed in wudu, for instance, the leg, is it permissible? First of all, the word tattoo raises a lot of question marks because tattooing is a major sin in Islam. The Prophet ﷺ, as in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, had cursed the tattoo artists and the women who have the tattoos done on them. لَعَنَ اللَّهُ الْوَاشِمَةِ وَالْمُسْتَوْشِمَةِ And this is an authentic hadith. Now, if what you're putting and applying is called tattoo metaphorically, but it is not, it does not fulfill the conditions of tattooing and it does not fall under the category of it because a one-week tattoo is permissible. <laughs> this is like applying hinna or what, as they call mehendi. So applying hinna is not problematic because it takes a week, couple of weeks, three weeks, and it fades away. So Rayana's question has two parts. One, the ruling on applying a one-week hinna or a tattoo. Two, if it's longer, but it is not in the organs of wudu. These prints that you put on your body are either not allowing water to reach underneath because they form a layer, or water can reach the skin without a problem because they are not a layer but rather a color. So if I get something that is drawn on my arm, which is waterproof, and I can feel that this part of the skin is skin, and when I put it on this print or tattoo, quote unquote, it feels that like there's a plastic layer on my arm. This does not allow water to reach your skin and hence you cannot apply this because your wudu would not be valid, your ghusl would not be valid. Now, if I apply it in my shoulder, for example, this is not part of the organs of wudu, so I can perform wudu without any problem. But if I were to have a major ritual impurity and I would need a ghusl, in this case, this would prevent my ghusl from being complete and valid, and hence, applying it is not permissible. Hinna, on the other hand, is something that you put for an hour or two until the color is fixed, and then you wash it off, and all what remains is a color. Like when I have a pen, and I just write a line. There's no layer on the skin. It's just the color. And this does not prevent water from reaching the skin and the wudu is valid. Having said that, I've noticed nowadays among the Muslims, men and women, unfortunately, that they're applying tattoos, but they apply it for a year or two years. Today in Fajr prayer, I saw a brother praying in the masjid with a big tattoo of a sailor's anchor on his leg and it was exposed. The brothers Aura from the navel to the knees were covered but his leg was not and everybody in the masjid was looking at that. This is not permissible. If you had done a tattoo when you were ignorant or when you were a kafir and now you've accepted Islam, you must hide it. 
We don't force you to remove it, but you cannot expose it and boast about it like this. This defies your repentance of it. It shows that you're not remorseful. Also, a lot of the youngsters, girls, they have tattoos on their hands. And they say that this is only for six months, for a year. This is haram. This is the one that she was cursed for. She says, but this is not in the third layer of the skin where they put the ink after they make it bleed, etc. It's the same concept. First layer, third layer, it doesn't make a difference. Not only that, a lot of the women ask about microblading. And they say that this is something they do for the eyebrows. This is tattooing. Because they slash the skin until it bleeds and they clean it and they open small places in the skin's layer where they inject ink. So they draw a nicely formed eyebrow with this ink and it shows with the remaining hairs of the eyebrows that it looks real and it looks fancy and it's fixed for six months, for a year, maybe two years. This process is cursed by Allah Azza wa Jal because this is totally um, tattooing.